Right, so I have, for some reason, have always wanted to play a 5 at the back. So I started a personal save, and I think the best team to do that with was West Ham. So I chose them, I tinkered around with some formations, but ultimately I found a formation and tactic that allowed me to get 100 points just in my second season. Oh my god! Wow! This was with only two losses to Arsenal and Man City. We scored 112 goals and only conceded 21. And as you can see, I changed my goalkeeper halfway through. In the first half of the season, I had Jordan Pickford. He played 22 games, only conceding six and got 18 clean sheets. What? But then I brought in Diego Costa, because he was available. And in 14 games, he conceded 15, only getting four clean sheets. So, Maybe Pickford was the answer to this tactic, but we still managed to go quite far with it. And looking at our schedule, we've had some absolutely unbelievable games. Like, first game of the season beating Aston Villa 4-0, beating Tottenham 7-0, beating Arsenal 5-0 away from home at the Emirates, beating Luton 9-0, and beating Newcastle 6-1 at home. As you can see in the schedule, March was basically a killer for the season, as we went out of the FA Cup and got our two only two losses in the league three games in a row we also got to the Carabao Cup final as well but agonizingly missed out on winning that and we got knocked out of the Champions League by RB Leipzig with a last minute winner from Seska so I'm going to quickly show you some of the highlights from this tactic and as we can see from this 7-0 win over Tottenham we had over a 5 xG and only allowed them one shot in the whole game. I'm going to show the highlights on the sideline camera angle so we can see quite far of the pitch. The first goal was from a corner and Inacio just headers it straight in. Now I'm just going to pause it here on the highlights as well as we can see our wing backs in this formation which is a 5-2-2-1 have quite a lot of room and the, the wing backs for this formation and tactic are uh, extremely extremely important i don't think i think if you didn't have good wing backs it probably wouldn't work because they are just so vital as you see straight into frimpong first time crossed into bowen and it's a goal again for another goal it looks like it's going to be played through the wing backs frimpong's got it down the right side plays it into the middle and bowen gets there and puts it in corners were quite vital for this team as well I see score from another corner here, it works its way through, Javi at the back post, both the shadow strikers linking up. Now this goal here, this goal here is a perfect example of how the striker works very well with the two shadow strikers. As you can see it comes into Bowen, Alvarez runs in from behind, behind the defence and puts it away. And again with the wing backs, Grimaldo's got it down the wing crosses it into the middle and it makes its way into the goal now in this 5-0 win away from home against arsenal as you can see we weren't too dominant obviously scored five goals so we had quite high xg but only nine shots six on target and we've managed to put them most of them away so it shows how clinical this tactic is as well again it's being played through the wing backs grimaldo's got it on the wing straight into the middle works header at the back post down to grimaldo again on the wing backs slot back for Xavi Simmons and it's another goal through the wing play the wing backs involved again Leif Davis on the ball now and he even gets a goal himself lovely right footed finish and then the final goal the libero picks it up in the middle plays through to the shadow strike with loads of space a little deflected goal but it goes into the back of the net now the last one we'll look at is semi-final of the Carabao Cup obviously with the high press I can see Javi Simmons has just picked it off the defender and put it into the back of the net. Here's my libero now, taking a beast of a shot. What a goal by Scalavini. And again, down the wings. Gets it into the middle. Bowen's there to pull it away. Deep line forward, linking up with the wing back. Works on the ball now, shadow striking loads and loads of space. Puts it away, easy enough. And then finally, Grimaldo on the ball again down the wing. Whips it in, Alvarez with a brilliant header and a brilliant goal. So now looking at the stats of all the players, the ones with all the goals here are obviously a combination of our front players. Got Bowen on 18, Simmons on 18, Wirtz on 20, 
Taliska on 23 and Julian Alvarez on 25. And then if we're looking at assists, Jeremy Frimpong with 20, Verts with 16, Grimaldo with 14. So as it sh obviously it shows you how important these wing backs are. They've got most of our assists. And now finally, let's see how the tactic is set up so you guys at home can implement it into your saves. So this is how it looks. We've got obviously the goalkeeper on sweeper defend. Let's have a quick look at his instructions. There isn't anything on him, it's just basic. We've got the two ball playing defenders either side of the libero. We we'll dribble less, shoot less often, and tackle harder on. Libero's got take more risks, dribble less, shoot less often, tackle harder and mark tighter. Now our wing backs, uh, Frimpong on the right has pass it shorter, shoot less often and tackle harder. The same on the left side. We've got a half back here who when the libero decides to step out, this half back tends to sit in, in his place and it sort of makes a 3-1 a formation. Uh, defensively makes a 3-1 formation and this libero sort of pings balls left and right uh, to these two guys here and Xiao Neves also attacks in the box with these four up here so for the Zagundo Volante he's on take fewer risks shoot less often and tackle harder the two shadow strikers are on shoot less often and tackle harder and then deep line forward is on dribble more shoot more often tackle harder and mark tighter and as you can see from the instructions we are playing attacking football uh, playing fairly wide pass into space overlapping on both sides to really take advantage of them wing backs uh, standard passing higher tempo run at defense low crosses as you, you've seen a lot of low crosses in them highlights we've got counter press and counter on distribute to the defense around the back take short kicks and then we play with a high press and a higher defensive line much more often prevent get stuck in i think get stuck in is quite important it just really makes you keep the ball a lot more often step uh, more up trap outside and stop crosses so yeah obviously as you can see this tactic in the league was incredible um in the champions league we did struggle obviously and all the other cups as well we did good in the carabao but then just unfortunately lost the final but that's the tactic when i'm playing the games so i sort of wanted to do a test where we could see how it would be if we were simulating the games because obviously with the rebuilds that i do on this channel we do a lot of simulations so i wanted to know if i could use this tactic that i've stumbled across in my rebuilds so to test this tactic i picked five teams liverpool palace and sheffield united all in the premier league all three different levels Forest Green in League 2 and Barcelona in the Spanish League. Now let's simulate the season and let's see how they get on. Right, so we're going to start off with Barcelona. And as we can see, they've won the league, 90 points, 55 goal difference as well, 80 goals and 25 conceded. So quite similar to West Ham with the goals conceded, quite low. Again, four quite poor losses to be honest, but that means we didn't lose to Real Madrid. We didn't draw with Real Madrid, so we must have beat Real Madrid twice. There's one win against Real Madrid. In the Champions League, they got to the semi-final against Bayern Munich, and Real Madrid and Bayern Munich are in the final now, actually. Semi-final, lost just 2-1. Won the first leg 1-0, and then lost 2-0 in the second, which is a poor... It's not amazing, but... As we can see, Lewandowski's finished top goal scorer there as well. Uh, in the Spanish Cup, we got knocked out by Sporting Gijon in the fourth round. That is interesting to say the least. Lost 3-0 to them and they're in the league below. Got absolutely dominated by them. Got nearly our full team out as well. That's unbelievable. And then we managed to win the Spanish Super Cup, beating Real Madrid 4-0 in the final. Now, did they have any outstanding games? I mean, obviously 4-0 against Real Madrid. 2-0 against Real Madrid, Atletico 3-1, 5-0 against Bilbao. We only conceded one goal to Real Madrid in the whole season, which is pretty good. Uh, went on quite a run of win wins here as well, if you ignore that Bayern Munich game. Quite good form towards the end of the season. Now let's move over to the next team. So now we are looking at Liverpool and they finished third. That's not quite too good. There's two draws in there, which look like they've took the four points off us 
which we probably wouldn't have won the league anyway but quite disappointed with Liverpool because I thought with the wing backs they've got Trent and Robertson it would be an absolute no-brainer that they'd be amazing Trent's got quite high assists 16 Salah's got 27 goals Verge with the highest average rating uh conceded 35 that's quite a lot of goals they've conceded as well only scoring 74 five losses five nil against Chelsea is horrendous at Anfield as well but they've got the Champions League the finished runners up in the Carabao Cup as well lost to Villa 3-1 got knocked out by Norwich in the FA Cup and got PSG in the quarterfinal of the Europa League which is quite unfortunate lost 5-4 as well only just going out and they ended up going on to win it so quite disappointed with Liverpool there Palace finished mid-table 53 points is quite a good return for them uh yeah 51 goals 49 conceded not too many horrendous losses there did they have any outstanding wins 4-3 against Chelsea which is pretty good going 3-0 against West Ham is a good win for them I beat Chelsea both times and also beat Arsenal as well and knocked Arsenal out of the Carabao Cup also but yeah pretty good going from them but yeah as we can see knocked out in the fourth round of both pretty average season now we've got Sheffield United who survived relegation by four points so I'd say that's good for them considering they are an extremely poor team managed to get 42 goals conceded in 67 though obviously a lot of the big teams there and in the competitions they got knocked out in the FA Cup by Coventry knocked out the Carabao by Leicester City now looking at the final team Forest Green Rovers they managed to get promotion which is incredible considering they finished rock bottom in real life this season with Troy Deeney uh, they got 80 points only six off the top uh, finished joint with fourth and fifth but obviously with a better goal difference they have finished above so they scored 84 goals which is a great return 60 goals conceded obviously their defense probably isn't the best but loads and loads of goals they got knocked out of all the competitions extremely early even to non-league woking third in the league is brilliant for them considering the preview for them was to finish 10th that is pretty good going so has this tactic in the simulation worked it's a bit of a mixed bag Barcelona, you can say it definitely worked. Winning the league over Real Madrid is massive. Getting to a Champions League semi final when they ain't won it since 2015 and have struggled in that competition probably since Liverpool knocked them out in 2019. I'd say that's definitely a success. Forest Green's definitely a success. Getting promoted with them, getting out of League Two is not. It's not easy, especially with uh, all the teams that are in there at the minute. Liverpool, extremely. I think that's really disappointing. Obviously, Europa League, that is just unfortunate. Could beat them, could lose them. Probably could have won the Carabao Cup. FA Cup definitely should have done better. The league, it's just a lot of draws. Maybe that's what this tactic produces, is a lot of draws. If you were going to play a save day by day, I think this tactic is absolutely perfect. Watching it, playing a whole two seasons with it that I have now with West Ham, it provides some really, really fun bits of gameplay, especially using them wingers a lot. A lot of interplay with them front three as well. It's like beautiful to watch honestly some great football and I've wanted to use five at the back for so long and it's never really worked until this season's FM but yeah definitely try this tactic out in your saves let me know how it gets on for you if you enjoyed this video leave it a like and comment how you did with this tactic and I'll catch you in the next one